Hello the 31st here, welcome back to another PowerPoint presentation. Today we're looking into the legendary birds and their regional variants that we're going to see in the upcoming DLC. I believe they're going to be exclusive to the Crown Tundra, so we're going to have to wait till around fall, uh, autumn, winter sort of time to actually see them. In the meantime, I'm going to do this sort of half character design analysis, half just general discussion, so we can have a little think about what we're going to see. Regional variants of any legendary Pokemon are really interesting to me as a biologist because it's good evidence to support the idea that legendary Pokemon do reproduce sexually and are subject to natural selection and evolution. And I think it is especially important with the three legendary birds because besides Manaphy, they are the only legendary Pokemon that we do know for a fact lay eggs. As you can see here and you might remember if you've played Pokemon Snap, you do encounter an egg of each of the three legendary birds. And these eggs appear to be massive. So this might go some way to explaining why the legendary birds are so rare. An egg this size would probably take a long time to develop, you know, to incubate before it hatches. And if baby Lugia is anything to go by, they still need a lot of care and protection from the mother until they're able to fend for themselves. So the mother would need to spend a long time protecting the egg and the child, no matter how strong, you know, Moltres is, an egg is still just an egg. All you gotta do is crack it open and slurp it up. And I imagine an egg like this would be extremely nutritious because it's such a powerful Pokemon. Plus it seems like they only lay one at a time, and, and as we have no idea how often they can do this, if they fail, it may be a very long time before they can produce new offspring. And if that's the case, you're very unlikely to get a population of legendary Pokemon. Not to mention us. People are idiots and some of us are evil. Humans might steal the eggs. And even in Pokemon Snap, we knock one of them into lava. We're lucky that it was a Moltres egg. If that had happened with an Articuno egg, we'd have royally fucked up. Anyway, going back to the DLC, the bird trio do seem to generally wander around from place to place. And their flying type and generalist body plans will obviously work pretty well for that. It would allow them to go wherever they want and survive there. But for some reason, they have seemed to end up stuck in the crown tundra, which has obviously led them to change. Whether that's through genetics or epigenetics or maybe some kind of artificial tampering. We'll now take a look at all the three birds and see how they've adapted and maybe speculate as to why these changes have occurred. We'll start off with Moltres. If we have a little look at him here, this is what he used to look like. And this is the new design. The most obvious thing here is that color change. He's now black. Although during the trailer, you do see him change into a white color as well. So he might be able to switch between the two. That's unsure for now. Maybe it's the sort of day and night thing. Uh, although the idea of him trying to blend into the night sky doesn't really fly with me. Because, you know, that, that fire that lights up the night as if it were day wouldn't really help. Moltres's fire is now a bright pink color. Lithium chloride, when added to fire, turns it this same bright pink colour, so lithium chloride might be involved in some way. It might also be producing black flames, although it's hard to tell whether it's fire or just its plumage. It's got some new markings all over its face, going down onto its neck, and all the way down its torso. And finally, the most important change, the beak. Instead of being a long, thin, straight beak, good for doing something like picking up Caterpie and other bugs, now it's got a much thicker, stronger beak with a sharp curve at the end. Perfect for killing and eating larger prey. On to Articuno. Articuno still has a very short beak, but again, it's more adapted to that predator lifestyle because of that curved raptor-esque beak. But this one looks more like an owl and possibly a hawk. Its entire design is now way more compact. It used to have very big puffy chest feathers, but now they're in nice and tight. Its crest is slick back and out of the way, possibly no longer for display, but more for function. The whole design seems to emphasize functionality and performance over flamboyance. It looks far more high-tech and intelligent, especially when you look at its new eyes, which look very technological. So it might be a steel type or more likely a psychic type. Owls are obviously known for their wisdom, and that would follow along if we're talking about intelligence. These images seem to show it psychically controlling feathers and using them as weapons. As well as it shooting freaking laser beams out of its eyes. Lastly, Zapdos. Zapdos might have experienced the biggest change, especially in its lifestyle. Zapdos is now a flightless bird. As you can see here, its wings have shrunk dramatically because it no longer needs them to fly. Its head and beak are also much smaller, which will make them lighter and easier for its very long neck to support. 
On the other hand, its tail feathers have gotten a lot longer, which would give it far more balance and agility when running. And obviously, it's got those big, powerful legs, perfect for running around, jumping and kicking. Its huge talons are truly deadly weapons. As you can see here, there is many pictures where it is seen to be kicking or at least pinning prey down with its legs. This may be based on a cassowary, but I imagine it operates in the same sort of niche as a terror bird, sprinting across the open plains or mountains to catch prey, using its size and long neck to see above tall grass. Although as you see here, Zapdos laps that raptor-like curved beak, meaning those legs are definitely its primary weapon rather than a killing bite. Personally, I think it's a really cool design. I am a big, big fan of it. I imagine it's going to gain a fighting typing based on those kicks and its animations in the trailer. There are many reasons why birds become flightless, but the main one is just that they don't need to fly anymore. They can get all the food they need on the ground and they have no predators there to kill them if they can't fly away. What links all three birds is this shared trend towards clearly becoming more aggressive and predatory creatures. Also, this tree. I have no idea what this tree is. Its leaves start as this dark red color and gradually become whiter until we reach the top where they are pure white. It bears these pink fruits and it has this odd shaped plant at the top. In the first scene of the trailer, we see art of it with someone in the explorer outfit beneath it. Also, the original designs of the birds laid out around the image. This tree is clearly linked somehow to their change. Maybe they're there to protect the tree or its fruit, and that's why they've stuck around it. The new Reggies also share this yellow and red stone sort of stone theme, so they might also have something to do with it. Personally, I'm extremely excited to find out. Here's just a few of the environments from the trailer. There's going to be some diversity to it. This one especially where you have this big open expanse looks like somewhere where a bipedal predatory land bird would have, would have some success. It would probably do well in a mountainous environment as well as a plane. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Again, please provide feedback on this style of video. You know, it's another PowerPoint. I've done it this way because I'm editing part two of the Evolution Pokedex BS video. And that is a video that needs a lot of animation, a lot of time and, and effort put into it. So doing this video this way, uh, it's only taken a day rather than the four or five it would have done, you know, if I had chosen to animate this all. Um, hopefully it's all right. It just allows me to produce some content for you while also, you know, get the, the big videos out faster. Please go watch episode one of Pokedex BS if you haven't already. Um, it's going to be a great series and, you know, there's another one coming soon. Um, yeah, so let me know any feedback you have on the video and all your thoughts down below. Why do you think the... Uh, Three legendary birds have evolved this way. Do you think someone tampered with them or do you think it's natural? Maybe it has something to do with the fruit. I don't know. Uh, hopefully, we'll find out fairly soon. Although, I think, like I said, we're going to have to wait till uh, fall or winter. Uh, but yeah, that's all. So, if that's it, thank you very much and I'll see you some other time. Goodbye.